Welcome to Get Big Out Loud Radio, where we explore living the complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with me, Carrie Knutson, and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are your thoughts keeping you small? Are you ready to get big? I will offer you ideas to transform what you are thinking into conscious action. Explore what is keeping you small and how to shift your behaviors in order to get big. Learn what is possible for you. Get ready to get big and live life out loud starting now. I am Dr. Pat and I get to take this, uh, what do we want to call it? Complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with the one and only Carrie Knutson. And by the way, this is Get Big Out Loud. Carrie and I have been doing this show now for several years and I I'm always amazed about what we're going to talk about and how perfect it is. And so I uh, got the episode, was looking at it, both Linda and I, and we just thought, was Carrie, was Carrie Canuzzi, was she in our house last night here? She had to be here. She had to be here or something, or she's like telepathically, telekinetically, whatever connected, because this is an energy that all y'all are going to want to know about. Are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose. And I want to say that because today's show is called Great Expectations. Carrie is somebody that knows a lot about this. You've heard her story, walked away from her career after being at the top of the counseling game, helping people accelerate in their lives, stepped away to say, I am going to be me. I'm going to be Knutson Speaks. I'm going to get out there. She's out there every day. I don't even know how she finds time to do this show. She helps other people take a message out into the world and have a big voice. And there's nothing more important right now. Our theme has been for years. We've been talking about how from the voices of the Carrie Knutsons, from her voice to your ears, into your heart. This is an intimate conversation. Whenever you're doing shows on human potential and how to thrive in life, we are tapping in to a very intimate relationship with, with you all. And we are very grateful. But today, you better be fastening your seatbelt, your shoulder harness. You better be putting it on because great expectations are in the house. Carrie, what the heck got into you with this one? Okay. <laughs> All right. I've been thinking about this so much because things in my life pop up. I always talk about what's going on in real life and I always talk about what I need to learn. And I start to get fascinated by things and how they apply. And I was thinking about this idea of like, when we want to change or grow or get out of the status quo, we have these great expectations for ourselves sometimes. Like even Sunday night, don't you ever go to bed Sunday night and think, you know what? Monday, watch out Monday because everything's going to change Monday. I'm going to get it all together. I'm going to do these things on my to-do list. I'm going to make these changes. I'm going to eat my breakfast. I'm going to fold the laundry when it gets out of the dryer. I'm going to, you know, whatever I'm going to do. And, and then, you know, Monday comes and that energy, maybe you start off well, but maybe by the afternoon, you're like, oh, I'll just wait till next week. Or let's say you're trying to eat better and you're doing really good throughout the day. And then at night you mess up. So, oh, I'll wait another week to do better. Like you just toss it all away. And so I was thinking about this idea of we set ourselves up for failure again and again and again. We have these great expectations and What's keeping us from really making progress is being thoughtful about our expectations. Could we still have great expectations and more thoughtful expectations so that we could actually achieve our goals? So that's what got into me is like, why do we set ourselves up for these big falls instead of thinking, can I still have great expectations and can they be reasonable so that I cannot quit on myself? I love this. Now, I know I always bring up stuff that maybe you're not aware of, but I got to bring this up. On the edge of your seat this weekend, the pinnacle of women's sports. Now, I have to say this because great expectations is what this is all about. I don't know if in my lifetime, Carrie, I would have been able to look back and being an athlete and a coach myself, you know, between Linda and I, we have either played or coached to multiple softball titles when we played softball than we can imagine. I thought about this the other day, too, in terms of my own sport. But what happened in women's basketball over the weekend 
was unprecedented, or at least this past week, because no one, I don't believe, I don't believe anyone could have expected, well, some people did, the outcome of the Final Four, the women's basketball between Iowa and South Carolina. I think people were hoping that it would be Iowa, but I don't think anyone really knew what to make or expect of the outstanding career, college career, uh, uh, that we are now talking about, about Ms. Clark, Caitlin Clark. I mean, when we see this and we see those kinds of results, we put it the exclamation point on great expectations. And Carrie, it's so funny you bringing this up today, because if we don't have great expectations for ourselves and our future, can we carry ourselves forward on the shoulders of others? Do you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, this young woman and all of the women that played in this here to this weekend, I don't want to spend more time on it. You can go Google it yourself. Well, I actually, so people who listen to us, Dr. Pat, know that you know things that I don't know about, like yeah, all exactly. And movies, but even I looked this up <laughs> and I even checked out Caitlin Clark. I know who you're talking about. This <laughs> I know this is the final four and I know who won. And I am <laughs> Uh, because I actually know something that you know about um, out of my out of my comfort zone, and it was inspiring, and it was interesting to see uh, the expectations around this, and like it was the highest watched game, not just the women's game, but the game. You know, there were so many firsts with this, and the fact that women are being highlighted in this way, and the fact that the shift in terms of what's possible. What's possible? Even my own kids who aren't into basketball at all wanted to talk about the game, wanted to watch it, wanted because they heard about it. And then seeing women like that, that they that they might be like, look at this strong, thoughtful, athletic, driven woman uh, and women, I should say, like not just Caitlin, but all, all of them. And then the way the coaches responded and uh, watching all that was very heartening to see this. It felt like a seismic shift in and not only seismic. sports, but in our perspective about sports. Yes. And what I loved about it was I want to talk about this in terms of great expectations and also humility, because we're going to talk about both today. Somehow, we seem to have the shame. And I don't think it's everybody. I think this has followed women around. I think we're shifting it. So let me just be clear. But I think there's been this guilt and shame on wanting more on having great expectations. And I think today we need to set the record straight that says it's not optional, great expectations in life are your birthright. What do you think about that little statement? Great, say that again, say the little statement again. Great expectations, great expectations are not just a casual luxury, it's a birthright. We've been given the ability to dream, to visualize, you know, to, right? To Caitlin Clark it. At yeah. many, many levels. And and look at how great Coach Dawn from South Carolina, the kudos she gave her in the speech. I mean, she didn't have to do that. South Carolina is a force. We know that. All their sports, women's softball is just crazy. But for her to come back and say, I want to honor this woman because she has had more of an impact on women's college basketball. Mm -hmm. than anybody before her do you think that great expectations do you think we have to really shift a few things to be in that zone I think that is such a good example of taking an opportunity to lift everyone up right and like we have this idea in our culture of like number one or nothing like you either did it or you didn't. You either like the top of it or you're nothing. And we don't think about who came in second, third, fourth, or fifth, or sixth. Or we don't even think sometimes who came along the journey. And a lot of times our ego is like, I'm the best. I won. Let me have all the accolades. <laughs> and sometimes I think in this moment, we saw a really cool thing happen. The, the joy of winning the game and being number one and lifting people up and recognizing talent when you see it and recognizing the seismic shift that this created around sports and engagement 
of people in sports and women in sports. So I feel like it can be both. And we get this dualistic, dualistic mindset all the time. I'm winning or I'm failing. It's good or it's bad. I did it or I didn't. And these great expectations that we're talking about, to me, it's more of an incremental, like, am I on my path? And also, can I, can I be winning for what winning looks like to me? Yes. And even if I'm not number one. And I think that's such a perfect example of what happened this weekend. Like, we won, we're psyched and we're bringing other people up. So on your journey too, of this great expectations, I feel like sometimes what, what we'll do is we have the power to dream and we have all these things that we can do, but we choose not to. We make a conscious choice not to, and it can come from a lot of different places. It can be an internal fear. Like, I want to do this, but here's why I can't. And then you tell yourself a story or you can say, I want to do this. And externally people say, well, here's why you can't. Or you're proud of something like, oh, I just did this thing. And someone's like, well, I've already done this, this and that. And then you're like, oh, I guess I'm not doing as good because I compared myself to you and now I'm not good. So everywhere you go, internally, externally, other people, you're like, you have to be conscious of it because you said we're in a point in life where we can set these great expectations and achieve them. But where the stumbling block comes in is the internal and the external things that keep us in the status quo, that keep us stuck, that keep us honestly, not, not, I wouldn't say necessarily sad because we don't have to be sad to want to change our lives. But I think there's a sadness that comes along with not fulfilling. Absolutely. All you could do. Yeah. Let me make it even stronger for you. You're absolutely right. And there's grief. Yes. See, This is the thing that if we allow fear due to, I'm not good enough. I didn't do it perfect enough. If we allow that to sift in, it takes on momentum. It's, it's worse than the earthquake. It's the aftershock. You know, there was an earthquake in New Jersey where Linda lives, where her sister lives a couple of days ago, like a 4.5. And Okay, people were rattled by the earthquake, but no, not as much as they were rattled and sat in anxiety for 48 hours waiting for the aftershock. You see that, right? 48 hours. And we do that now. So we'll have a little quake. You know, when I did the whole crust busting thing, we used to call them crust quakes. We used to call them in the crust busting vernacular. But let's talk about it. What are the things that we say to ourselves that perhaps we didn't see on the basket? I didn't see it on the basketball court. And I didn't see it when Florida beat South Carolina in fast pitch softball the other day. But we do say things to ourselves. Let's talk about what we say to ourselves that will take a great expectation and start to dilute it until it's not a great expectation anymore, right? Yes. And the, are the, go ahead. Tell us what they are. Go ahead. Well, this is the thing that's so important to bring consciousness to, because once you can catch yourself saying these things, then you have an opportunity to say something different. But the important thing is to catch yourself first, not to just like never say that because it's our human nature. It kind of comes up like when we don't even expect it. So it's important to be like, oh, I had that thought again. Oh, look at that. What just came up? Like, it's not that you're trying to crush the thoughts. I feel like it's it's kind of how our computer brain mind works. So like, I'm going to offer up these thoughts randomly. And if you just keep going through your life and don't be like, oh, that thought was not helpful. <laughs> or I'm going to I'm gonna stop that in its tracks. So sometimes we'll be like, um, I'm going to do this thing. I want to try this. Let's say, and it's what I usually think about is, this is how it happens for me. I'll get a spark of intuition. I feel like it comes up right here. Like, a, <laughs> I'm going to do that thing. Like, I'm going to go do this thing. And um. Here's here's an example, perfect example of recently what I thought about. So I um, am fluent in sign language and I work in the deaf community and there's an event happening in Guatemala at a deaf school that I want to go to. Okay, so here's what I said. I want to go to that event in Guatemala. And then I was like, can I even go? I don't know if I can afford that. How will I make that work? What about the kids' summer schedule? Is that like going to happen? Why am I going to go there? I'm not in the field right now. I shouldn't, am I going to, are they going to want me? And like, whoop, I, I just had this flash and then I was like, all the reasons I can't. Before I even let this let the spark go. And so I think of it like a candle that when you get that inspiration, you have to protect it against all of your realistic and unrealistic thoughts. Right. It's okay to say, do I have enough money? But it's not okay to say, and therefore I totally can't go right. before I even spoke the words, right? So we we say things like, here's why I can't, here's why it won't work. I'm and then we say things like, I'm too. Everyone's too old or too young, and everyone's probably too fat. 
very rarely do people think they're too skinny, right? I'm too, um, I'm not experienced enough. I don't have this, whatever it is, that's going to throw out. I'm too, and then put whatever. And then sometimes we say, who am I to, I can't, what am I thinking? And, and, and so you have these thoughts that come up around like, I'm not, and, and really they're connected. Am I worthy enough of this? And should I want this? Um, and then sometimes we get around time, like who has time for that? Or, I should be so happy or I'm so lucky I already have this. Why do I want more? Like we get in these, just notice your mind trying to keep you in that space. And I even say, before you even take one action step, you have to be allowed to dream about what if, Yeah. what if I did this thing or yeah. look into why did that spark my excitement? Yeah. Right. Like you have to protect that little bit of space from all these things that your brain is going to throw up to be like, you need to do that. It's yeah. so done it yet and so you have to be like haha ha. I see what you did there I'm, I'm I don't know how it's all gonna happen but all I want to do right now is just have that idea maybe I'll and for people out there maybe I'll take that class I wanted to take maybe I'll take that trip maybe I'll reach out to that person maybe I'll write that blog post maybe I'll start that podcast maybe I want to um do this big house project maybe I'll learn how to garden whatever it is that thing you have to protect it and not blow out that, that flame before you you give it a shot yeah, I love this. You know, here's the thing. I love that you shared that story. We got so many stories on this to share. For those of you out there, you want to share a story with us right now on Great Expectations, give us a call. Are you stumbling? Are you tripping? Do you think you're not enough? Do you have an idea that somebody told you, eh, not so good? 1-800-930-2819. Chime in because we are creating a shift now. Look, so here, here. All of a sudden, I've had three people contact me or through Jessica or through Linda ask if I was selling my company in the past two weeks. So I have a view about that, but it's very different than other people have. So it's, I was listening and I was listening to all of the reasons why people are interested in the company. And it was, wow, Pat. You know, are you go listen to this. I, I hate even saying it on air, so, but let me just get it out. Wow, you must be going through some rough times. Did something get out about your company failing or something like that, that people want to buy it? And I'm listening to this, one of a team member, and I'm like, we, I said, no. Do you know why they want to buy this company? Because they see what we're doing. They see the value. They see now we have an A plus Better Business Bureau rating in the broadcast industry, which is ridiculous to get. And I said, where are you people coming from throwing in the towel? That's why people want, people want to buy your company, right? Why do they want to buy it? They see something. Uh, and no, I'm not selling the company, but I love this energy. And so my team, they, people look at me like, what do you mean you like the, I said, I love the energy. I mean, think about when people want what you have. I don't care if it's that beautiful stained glass behind Carrie that somebody's like, are you selling the glass? I, it doesn't matter when people are there and they're admiring this. Why is it, Carrie, we want to go to the darkest place on the planet, worse than the eclipse is going to be, rather than say, dang, I must be doing pretty good at gymnastics. No, I'm not doing good at gymnastics, but I know you got a story. Right. I, you, I'm really doing good at this company, or I'm, or I have things that like people are contacting me because they, instead of like, what's wrong to be like, what's right. Right. Yeah. Like that's what you're talking about, how we tend to like downplay it, or we tend to why we can't do something or what's wrong or what, instead of either taking pride in it and not ego pride, but being like, yeah, because no. this company is rocking because I'm doing a good job because I have high expectations. I have a great team. I have a great team. Totally. All the things that you're talking about, but it's the human, I feel like it's the human condition. And, and that's why we have to catch ourselves. It's, it's, we have to catch ourselves when we, when we get in that space, because our brain, I feel like what happens is our brain is so intent on keeping us safe and safe in our brain means comfort zone. It means status quo. It means do what you've done. So anything out of that equals a threat in some way, even if it's not an actual threat, but the brain is like, wait a minute. If you do this thing you want to do, 
or think a different way or take a different action, I'm going to have to change it. And I like this, like, oh, I know what to expect. I know. Like, I think of the brain being like, oh, please make it easy, please. And so anytime you want to change something, it like offers up some resistance. So even notice, even notice our resistance to things around like, things that would take us 10 minutes to do, but we just don't want to like things like if you wanted to like clean up something in the storage room or yeah. like, you know, go through some old <laughs> papers or whatever. You're like, Oh, it'll take a long time. I don't want to do that. <laughs> this is really busy work. I'm not, I'm so, all of a sudden I got hungry. Now I'm distracted. Like our brain is like, please don't do that thing because now I'll have to really engage. And so I just think of my brain sometimes is like on permanent, like, I don't know, vacation status. Like, please just do what you've always done. Cause I don't really, feel like it. And that's why I have to be like, okay, I see you. And we're doing this anyway, because I see what you've offered up to me. And it could be for the littlest thing, Dr. Yes. Pat. Like honestly, like cleaning up the kitchen today. We don't want to do it, but we did we do things because we they need to get done. And I think we also have to stop saying, do I really want to do this versus do I need this for my business or my life? Yeah. Do yeah. I need this to fulfill some version of me that I know is out there? Do I want this experience? And even though I know it's going to cost time and money and make things different, am I willing? Am I willing? Can I just try? Yeah. Can I just, and I love to say, can I just, and talking to my brain that way, can I just, well, maybe we'll just try this. Well, let's just try, let's just not blow out the flame yet. But I, I think about that duality of like, our, our our instinct to stay the same and do the same things in the same way and then the energy that it takes not to not for even a dramatic change but even a little change yeah and so we have to gear ourselves up for that yeah I want to talk to you about a frenemy uh so that's like a term Emily is going to have to correct me if I do that wrong like frenemy what is that that's like like an enemy that you think is a friend or something I don't know the right term but here it is this is the frenemy the worst the worst thing you can invite into your great expectation. It is one of the worst. When we come back from break, I'm going to tell you what it is. You, you, I know once Carrie and I talk about it, uh, it it's the great C word. It's the word. It's the, the one thing. I don't care who you are. You could be Taylor Swift. You could be uh, Caitlin. It doesn't matter who you are. Once you invite this one thing in, you have opened the door to negative thinking. Once you invite this in, and it doesn't matter what part of life it is, it doesn't matter if it's which donut you got or didn't get, we're going to talk about it before we go. What's the best way for people to find out about you? Tell us about your speaking schedule, all of the above. So you can hang out with me at KnutsonSpeaks.com. And on, that, on my website, you'll see I have all my topics listed. I have coaching opportunities. Uh, I'm going to do my show again in the fall. So you can have my one woman show. Awesome. And um, yeah, it's exciting. And I'm going to start offering public seminars, which you can find on my website. So normally now people can only come see me related to if a company hires me that people in the company come private this year, I'm doing public seminars. So I'll have information on my website about my public seminars in uh, located in Colorado. And I'm also going to be doing them virtually. So those are two new things coming up that I'm really excited about. Now, when we come back, you're going to be shocked at the thing that we're talking about next. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, they're so right about that. All right, we're going to take a short break, Emily. When we come back, get ready, get your notepad out or get your smartphone out. You're going to want to write this down because we're going to give you a challenge today on this to keep track of how often you do this. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm Dr. Pat. I get to hang out and do this fabulous show with the one and only Carrie Knudsen. And I wanted to say this to y'all out there. Um, if there's anything you need to know about how you can up-level your game, whether it's speaking, presenting, whether it's, I don't even know where to begin. You know, so many people want to be speaking. They want to be speakers. They really want to, I've had more conversations with people that want to do this. But what I find is even in the conversations with folks, it's hard for them to imagine you actually have to work at this. And that's what I want to say about what you do. You help people understand, yes, you have to do the work. But as you do the work, you will get better. 
and you will be able to be in the world and you will be able to speak about things that are important to you. Um, but there is one thing that will shut that down and every other dream you have, shut it down faster than anything. It's what I was referring to before the break. What do you think that is? Comparison, our favorite topic and favorite quote of all time. Comparison is the thief of joy, which I took the liberty to change to comparison is just a thief. Comparison is a thief of your own experience of where you are in life, of how you're feeling about it. Like it's just not the thief of joy. So that's one small thing. It's a thief of everything that feels to me that we can own as ours. And we can see it pop up. Comparison will pop up all the time. And again, this is our brain, our brain at work. I don't ever, I don't, well, I don't know if it's never happened, but I can't think of a situation where I've compared myself to someone else and been, oh, I'm better than you. Like I, I'm, <laughs> if I'm choosing to do that, I'm always comparing what's wrong with me, right? Yeah. It's, oh, I'm comparing myself and I'm better than you. We don't really do that. We always like, we'll see what we don't have or what we, what we lack or how we're on a different path than someone. We're not, the, we're not on their path. So we're not good enough. I just feel like we always compare down instead yeah. of up. And that's that either or thinking. So why can't you be on your path doing your thing? And I'm on mine and both are equally as good. Like we're, they're, they're not comparing. It's like apples and oranges. Like I can't compare myself to you because there, there really is the comparison is so stark. I feel like, why are we doing that? But we and do it all the time. Lose. So comparison is just a thief. Yeah. Uh, I think you made that into a sticker too. I have so many stickers that I do use with my gigs and I, I that's my new <laughs> sticker. <laughs> but we do it even when you and I coach it shows up it shows up I want to be like well I, I I I was helping this woman and now she's she's got all these clients and making all this money and I said oh uh, okay you and so okay in looking at that what did you think about your doing you help this person get these gigs but you're not getting money. So, I mean, we go to the worst possible scenario, right? When it Whether it's the car or the lawn or the dog, or I mean, we just do it. But if you're going to do it about great expectations about your personal life or your professional life, it would be like putting acid on your plants. Yes. That's what comparison does. Yes, especially when you say in your personal or professional life, you and especially when you're trying to have these great expectations for yourself, the easiest way to kill off your drive and your desire is to start the comparison game. Now, I think comparison is different than looking for support, for coaching, for examples, for ideas. I don't think people should go on a great expectation journey alone. That That's not no. the point. Like, I'm going to do it by myself. I think you should look around and see how other, that's like when I coach, I love coaching people how to be better speakers because I'm a speaker who speaks a lot and I have a lot to offer and I'm always going to grow and learn as a speaker. And why should, I think the world needs better speakers. So let's share. It's not like a secret. And this is the thing I think is a little bit funny. There's some speaker organizations where you can be the world's best speaker. Like there's, um, <laughs> there's awards and stuff. And I'm like, does that actually get you more gigs out in the world? Does he have it? And like, doesn't everybody need to be a better speaker? I yeah. just, I know we want to, we always want to race to the top at any field, but I just don't think world's best speaker is um an award that I'm looking for. I'm looking, I'm looking to to, to be doing the work, right? Wow. And the audience will let you know how good you are or not. <laughs> like right? if you get referrals, if you keep speaking, but you don't need to go after an award. And I also don't think on your journey, what if let's say like people who want to become a speaker, it's a perfect example. You look and see other people and, and you see them at different levels of not only experience, but expertise. So when you think about your journey, like me, Kara Knudsen speaking 10 years ago, versus five years ago, <laughs> five weeks ago versus five days ago, there's a huge evolution. Yeah. Huge. But yet I'll sit in some big conference and I'll be sitting there watching the keynote and I'll eat and I'll be like, oh, they're so good. Oh, I should make some of that. Oh, that's so good. And then I'll be like, can I even do that? And I, again, you start to, unless you catch yourself and like, no, what can I learn from them? What do I see in them? How can that inspire me? Rather than like, I'll never be that good. Or they have six books and I have nothing. Or, or like, are they <laughs> look at their tech or whatever we just we do all these things and we, we have do to catch ourselves 
Yeah. I have never, I mean, it's interesting. I was interviewed about six months ago about, I don't know what, maybe my 20th year or something. I can't remember why they interviewed me, but they were interviewing me and they asked me the comparison question. And I said, you know, when I entered this 20 years, I was totally ignorant and it was to my benefit that I was. I said, don't, don't confuse the word ignorance with stupidity. I wasn't stupid, but I was totally ignorant about this industry and profession. And that turned out to be the greatest blessing I had. So the follow-up question was, well, didn't you look at other people and what they were doing? I said, I, I wouldn't have even known how to look at other people and what they were doing because I didn't know enough about this industry or even what I was doing. I said, I knew I had crust busting your way to an awesome life. I knew I wanted to interview people. I knew I wanted to give Shirley MacLaine and other people crust busting awards. And I just did it. If I'd have looked about other people and saw what they were doing, I wouldn't have seen that because they weren't doing it. So how often do we compare? Now, I want to get back to something you said, because it's really important. Great expectations has to be followed up with or aligned with great motivation. You have to be aligned with getting up every day and looking at your day and thinking, today I'm more motivated than yesterday to fulfill my purpose and my dream. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to allow myself to change my purpose and my dream yes. as I desire, right? Yeah. And the, well, that's the reason like getting a world's best seeker award does not motivate me. <laughs> but, but speaking a lot and connecting with people and coaching about speaking yeah. and coaching about other things, like all this work feels like good work, even if it's hard work. So you do have to connect your expectations and your motivation, like connect into your why, like, why am I doing this? And also, and how will this look for me? So you can see the trajectory of a lot of different careers or ideas, or even being an entrepreneur, playing out as an entrepreneur looks like a hundred different ways. And so what I think it's interesting to recognize, like I'm on my own path yeah. and it's the only path that I need to be on because everyone's doing their own thing too. And can I learn from other people? Can I grow? Can I take some advice? Can I get some coaching? Can I, can I improve? But I don't want to then lose track of my why. And sometimes we lose track of our why by, I want to get this award. I want to get this much money. Like I did yeah. people call me, but like, how much can I make as a speaker? I'm like $40 or $400,000. I don't know. It's what you charge. Well, what, what will people pay you? How do you get like, it's, and I was like, if you're in this to make money though, you got to rethink it because that motivation will soon run out because it's a heck of a lot of work. Yeah. And yeah. So I just feel like you have to keep these things in check because you want, like, we'll have this conversation today. And I guarantee you later today, something will pop up for me where I'm like, me too. you know, better like, look what just came up for you. Like, just, you know, so like, just, just know that it's not a set it and forget it. It's, I call it, it's on the daily and it's I just on like, the daily. it's my mind and giggle a little bit. I'm like, Oh, I see what you just did. I saw that. <laughs> but let's talk about something super important around this. Those of you out there listening, please understand that Carrie and I, we do not do things on our own. Support is our best friend. You know, like we talked about comparison, about being the toxicity that will deflate a dream, a vision, take you off course faster than anything, but comparison to learn. So let's just be very clear. There are different forms of comparison. But how do you know what you're doing and when you're doing it? Both of us work with coaches. I have coaches. There is support that is important for anybody out there that has a great expectation. Now, unless you're superhuman and you can do something all by yourself and you can raise yourself up by yourself, great. You're in like the 1% of the world. But support, where does that fit in to making sure that I'm not pouring, you know, the toxicity of comparison on my dream, but instead I have the people and the tools around me to get myself fired up. Oh yeah. And I love that reframing of like, instead of comparing into others, how come I to utilize others for support? So we, I feel like we have to be choosy in who yes. we surround ourselves with because it can be cloaked, like support can be cloaked in different ways or like, is this real support or not? And like, are you, like even around like I 
um, I love, I have a couple of friends that I go to, I'm like, what do you think about this? That will offer me not just like, great, do whatever. But like, what about this? Have you thought about this? This doesn't really make sense when I'm trying to talk about something that will give me honest feedback about like, I don't understand what you just said, or that's too much psychological talk. Right? <laughs> you need to be like, I don't know anything in psychology, right? Which has helped me tremendously be go to a broader audience. So like, who do you look to for that feedback? How do you get that support? How do you surround yourself with people and engage with coaches and mentors and organizations that actually want to help you and 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 also what I say is for, for me anyone saying like do it this way like this is the only way this is the way you have to do it be careful of that because oh. that might work for them but it probably won't work for you and that's I like get it. someone else's shoes and being like these are my size but these feel weird to me right like you just have to own for yourself you might need different levels of support. And also you might have a great, like I have a great, I could talk and speak and come with content. I cannot do invoicing, billing, a spreadsheet, <laughs> save my life. So I have an amazing assistant. She's incredible. She's like, she does all the things. And we're like the yin and yang. Her brain works differently. <laughs> differently. I, she's, I need her in my team. Like she's I call her, I, we're both left-handed, so I call her my left-hand gal. Um, <laughs> she's also Linda, and um, she's incredible. And I keep thinking, I I don't have to be good at all the things to run a successful business. I do need to be good at connecting with the right people to run my business. I do need to be good at seeing who can help me yeah. in positive ways. I need, to, I need to see who's going to mentor and coach and support me yeah. um, on my journey. And I need to bring those people in close. Well, let's talk about this in the physicality of things. You know, it's funny, we were, we started out by talking about basketball and, and then Linda and I were talking and I said, a light bulb went on for me and, and she we kind of looked at me talking about it. I said, you know what the difference between those two teams were? I said, I didn't know it until the end when Coach Dawn was talking about how they got there at the end when it was all over. And she stopped by calling out an addition to their staff. They brought on a coach and he entered the team and he was the perimeter coach. And you hear her talk about him and how special he was. And what did they do? They wiped up the perimeters. And she was talking about this new coach and who he was. And she said, you know, sometimes I would tell him that you're going too hard. You're going too hard. But he kept going. And I, and I thought for a moment, wow, that was the difference in the game a new coach to work on an area they needed to work on. The humility, first of all, of Coach Dawn to bring that person in and then allow that person to shape these women. Let's talk about this because I have coaches in the sport I play. There are people we bring in, but then we have to look at what they're telling us, how they're telling us. And I mentioned gymnastics before, but you have a story to tell on that. So I wanted to tell the story about gymnastics because I'm not in gymnastics with my daughter. <laughs> I'm not either. And um, the reason this whole thing came about, I was, I've been observing her gymnastics class for the past couple of months and they're really working on the back handspring. And they didn't just say, I just, it's just kind of clicked to me how they've been doing this at her. It's, it's called bounce. It's in Denver at, at bounce. They, they were first talking about a back handspring and then they like demonstrated the back handspring, but then they broke it down into be like, not only do you need to be able to hurl yourself backwards, but you have to catch yourself. And then you have to have the core strength to flip your legs over and you have to have the speed. And then you know how scary it is to hurl yourself backwards. Like I can't imagine even going into a pool backwards, like is scary for me. Right. So like, you, and they didn't say, okay, everyone just do the back handspring. All right, good luck. We've explained it to you. We showed you. We told you a couple of things. Let's go. And and I, what I've been seeing in this class is so incredible because they're working in stations on arm strength. So they'll be doing chin-ups and pull-ups and push-ups and all these <laughs> arm exercises. And then they're on the... Um, trampoline practicing what it's like to get height and just what it's like to kind of get height and then do flips that way then they're practicing there's this huge like i don't know foam pad that basically you just run and then you turn around and you just throw yourself over but the pads there to protect so like they're running 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 then they they do their you know cartwheels start the back handspring or whatever they do with their legs and then they just throw themselves on this pad with the full assurance the pad is so heavy it can only go so far but they're working on moving that pad back so i'm seeing these kids run around the gym laughing high-fiving i'm seeing then the coaches start spotting 
So the coach, when they start doing without all the pads, like some, and I'm seeing some kids like crumple and they can't figure it out. I'm seeing the coach catch them. I'm seeing other kids like really be scared to go over the back. Other kids can totally do that now. And each week I'm seeing this progression and it made me think about, there's not one person in there, not one kid that was like, well, I couldn't do it the first time. So back handspring, you're not for me. Or now no one's saying like, this is taking forever. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm sick of all this. And no one's being like, I don't understand why we have to do the arms if we want to do a back handspring. Like, I just can't. And it made me think in our lives when we need to learn how to do the back handspring. So many, well, first of all, I can't because. Second of all, I don't want to do the work in the arms. Third of all, all those other people can do it and I can't, so maybe it's not for me. And also it's taking so long. How long will it take? And I was thinking about that's what we do. And yeah. so this whole gymnastics thing really made me think of great expectations because you know what? Eventually Claire's going to do a back handspring and it's going to be through all of these things coming together in her own timeline. Yeah. And that made me think about my own timeline for the things I'm working on and all the, you know, proverbial supports. Like where's my back support when yeah. I'm like throw myself backwards, which for me, it looks like in my world, throwing myself backwards looks like the next level for speaking or what I want to achieve in my business or writing a book or doing something like that. Right. But you'd see what you're talking about is so important. I was on a call this morning with one of our new um, hosts and all she talked about was having the support that we provide. I mean, she's, but we just do it. You see, we just do what we do. But this idea of knowing how to take that leap, we got to do a show on this. We got to do a show on the great leap because knowing that we can take the leap and there is the foam that catches us, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. I don't know about you, but I can get scared multiple times in a day. I really can. And I'm human and, and people hear me say that. And then I'll get like emails now about it, but I'm human. I get scared about things. I don't go into a fear free fall. See, there's a difference between getting scared, right? Like, haven't ridden a Harley Davidson in a few years. Now I'm going to go get on the Harley, right? We're going to go rent the Harley. I'm going to probably go ride out there with Joe and Susan, going to get Linda on the Harley. And I know that the first time I get on that Harley, and I'm not affiliated with Harley, but I grew up riding Harleys. But the minute I get on it, I can't say that I'm not going to be a little scared. Yes. But what's so perfect about what you're saying is like the fear is natural. The fear is like part of, oh, you're doing something different or new or something you haven't done before. The fear is not the reason though to stop. Most people get scared and then they stop. Or one other thing I want to say is, People probably say like, you get scared, you get scared because they see you in a, in a public way. And then they create this idea of you that somehow is not human. Just like people say, I tell people in my talks, I cry and I get mad and I can't tell you how many people say, but you're a therapist. Like you cry and you get mad. I'm like, yes, because I'm a human being. Oh my God. I cry all the time. I get mad. And I process that because I'm like not a robot. I'm a human having human <laughs> experiences. And so when you say you get scared, it doesn't mean you still don't do great things or try hard, but you get scared because you're human. And one of the things that's interesting about people who get scared and then realize because they're human and then do it anyway is because they assess the difference between fear and danger. Am I just scared because of something new or is this really dangerous? (laughs) And you're able to assess that in a way that actually helps you for you get on that Harley, do that thing that you want to do. And for people out there, if you look at your past, there's been moments in your life where you've been scared, you recognize the fear and you've done it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a marker. Yeah. I mean, look, I feel that way about every up level that I do. And every day I'm up leveling something, even to do a show like this, Yes, you know, even before a show like this, you get those butterflies, but it's being in that place where that's healthy fear. That's nothing to be ashamed of. You may not shout it to the world, but there's a healthy healthiness that allows you to readjust, reconnect and build your confidence about it, right? But again, you really have to distinguish between that healthiness and a warning sign of danger. You really need to learn that 
because when you get ready to take the leap, like I skydive, when you get ready to take the leap, you better make sure everything's working, right? So there's a due diligence factor to preparing for great expectations. Absolutely. But here's what I'll just say. The caveat to that is that you have to have due diligence, but most of us will spend so much time planning the thing rather than doing the thing and, and trying to make sure it's all going to work out. And all I, what I personally think is in a situation, well, and then if you go back to the gymnastics things, you can see the pad behind you. You can know that the kids are going to throw themselves yes. up. Let's see you, you see the, the kids like, you know, some level of like you, there has to be some momentum to throw yourself back on that pad to make it work. You cannot show up to that pad and just lay on it. So to yeah. me, you, you can see that things are there. You can know the coach is going to support you, but at some point you have to have some momentum yeah. to show yourself to do the thing you don't think you can do even without perfectly knowing how it's all going to go out. And I do think we're really good at knowing the difference between fear and danger. We do. I think we're, it's inherent in us. We listen to the fear a lot and confuse it with danger, but I feel like if we're, really, if we're being thoughtful about it, we can say, Hey, fear, Thanks for letting me know that I'm about to do something different. This is outside my comfort zone. I've never done it before. That might not look good. It might not be pretty, but do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Thanks yeah. for helping me out. <laughs> you have to do it. Look, I play a sport and I haven't talked about this today, but one of our players got seriously hurt playing yesterday, uh, Saturday, broke her wrist. Oh. And, you know, I play a sport and people think ping pong. No, not the way we play. And yet I now know where I am that if I'm going to play doubles with somebody, I have to know who my partner is because they collided. These two people collided and she went flying, broke her wrist and she's a good player. And, you know, when something like that happens, of course, everybody says, did you push her? Were you playing? No, I wasn't playing with her. I didn't. Play. Yeah. Right. So you get that. Right. <laughs> um, but even in that, right you know that you have to really look at your landscape and the, the foam behind you, you look at your landscape and then you decide, what am I going to listen to? And my gut will tell me nine times out of 10, you know what? If you do play with them, play differently, Pat, Pat play in the background. But this is how we have to walk through life. Great expectations is our birthright. Yes. It is our birthright have to own that like what you said because I feel like a lot of us stay in this I can only expect so much because think about the messages in our society like either from your family or your society based on your gender your sexuality where you live your income your race sex class like anything you want to think about usually sets us up for what you should this is the expectation you have of yourself or someone tells us well this is how far you can go or don't get too big for your britches and I feel like every single person has something inside of them that is a great expectation for what is possible for them, either in spite of or because of whatever they're, they're dealing with. But all of us have something in us that I feel is like that thing, like that that's intrinsic to the human experience. Like, why do we do the things that we want to do? We're making meaning out of our days. We're want to contribute. We want to connect. We have something to share and, and we're constantly trying to connect with other people and do it. So I feel like it's, it is our birthright to do that. Yeah. And we're missing out if we don't, if we don't allow ourselves to have some great expectations, if we don't allow ourselves to say, I'm worthy of a great expectations for myself. I'm worthy of support for the journey. I'm worthy of trying. And I'm just going to take, I'm going to like say yay for my effort, not even my outcome. Cause sometimes you have great effort and the outcome isn't so great. And you say like, well, I appreciate my effort in this moment, right? Because sometimes you're like, oh, that's not the outcome I thought. Whoops. Totally there. Yeah. But that's what I feel like I want to encourage people to think about how can I get in alignment with what I know to be true for me. And then when I have this expectation or idea or thing, and it could be, I think sometimes people listen to me talk and think, oh, now I've got to be an entrepreneur and do a speaking business. But some people it's like, I want to learn how to swim and I'm 52 and I want to do it. I want to learn how to ride a bike. I want to go on that trip by myself. I want to learn this skill. I want to try this thing. I want to do this different. It doesn't have to be like this huge thing. Sometimes if you look at yourself, like what's that thing I know I want to progress on? What's that thing I want to shift? 
I want to rent me a Harley. What? That, I want to rent me a Harley. Look, it doesn't have to be Mount Everest. And thank you for bringing this topic because there are in the world now, all of you listening, I said I was going to give you a challenge. Here's the challenge. First of all, Carrie Knudsen, go to knudsenspeaks.com. Check it out. Find out about Carrie. Get yourself some help if you want to achieve some things in life. But here is the challenge. It's called the comparison challenge. I want all of you listening to this, try this out. Grab a pad, a post-it pad or some pad. And every time you see yourselves comparing, I want you to write a post-it note, but then I want you to pull that out and stick that on the wall. Every time, carry this with you. Grocery store, it doesn't matter. Write it down, put them on the wall and tell us where you are in a week. We want to know. Don't take them down. Don't worry about your family coming and look. Write them down. Do you know why, Carrie? Because awareness is the first step. If you're not aware you're doing this, you're never going to know how to adjust it. Thank you for today. Last message. What do you want to leave us with? I just want to leave with the idea of don't leave your great expectations covered in fear, overwhelm, guilt, or why I shouldn't do it. I want to encourage you to think about when that thing comes up, that spark, that idea, protect it, honor it, say it out loud, and don't blow out the flame of that before you do something. And acknowledge fear for what it is. It's just letting you know you haven't done something before. Also, be nice. Your brain is just trying to keep you safe and comfortable. Utilize your brain to help you. Notice when it's putting up stuff that you can be like, okay, I see you. I saw that and just become a little more yeah. aware. And I would encourage anyone listening today, think of one thing and make it the smallest thing you've been dreaming about or thinking about some little thing that might shift something in your life because progress, when you can see a little bit of progress, that gives you motivation to keep trying and start with the littlest thing that you think you can make progress on and then go from there. I want to leave everybody with a few names because these women did exactly that. Ashley Graham, Paloma Esser. Hunter McGrady, Candace Huffman, Denise Bedeau, uh, Iskra Lawrence, Precious Lee, Tess Holiday, Barbie Fear, and there are more. These are women that change the landscape of fashion. They are considered models. They are considered models for curvy women. Another plus size clothing. These are women that change the entire landscape of fashion because they had an idea and they were tired of comparing. Bingo to those ladies, bingo to you. Thanks for all of you. Get the post-its out. Emily, you too. We'll see you next time. Carrie Knudsen, I'm Dr. Pat. You have been listening to Get Big Out Loud Radio, where we explore the complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with me, Carrie Knudsen, joining Dr. Pat live every second Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. I will help you to know which thoughts are keeping you small in order for you to get big. Get big and live your life out loud. For more information, visit KnutsonSpeaks.com.